Miz or Bond, new Premier Battles Champion. Uh, it's very bittersweet. Um, obviously, the circumstances aren't ideal for me winning them. I thought I, w I thought I would have won it the right way, should I say, in beating you now at all the smoke. But obviously, that hasn't materialised twice now. So I appreciate the decision to install me as a champ, and obviously, I'm, I'm really happy and, and buzzing and set to go now for it, ready for 2022. I, I genuinely don't think he could have beat me with the way I, with the way my material was, with how much I wanted it, um, with how I'd, I'd improve my performance. I mean, everyone says that my Bobby material was the best material you've heard from me so far, but this was I thought this was another level up, and I was so excited for doing it at Apex. I was so excited for doing it at uh, all the smoke. So I'm just I'm gutted the battle hasn't materialised simply because. What I had planned for it, I thought would have would have gone down really well. It would have ended the year perfectly for me. I think I wanted to win it from day one. I knew I knew that I had the ability to win it. I knew that I wanted to get as far as possible. I knew that I'd be getting the top tier opponents that I've been screaming out for since I come back. Um, and yeah, I was that was all my focus was on all all this last year that's just gone. My whole focus was in this tournament. No music, just no battles elsewhere it was just solely Anik win the anarchy tournament that's all i had in my head Battles. This is the Anarchy final. We finally reached the standpoint of the whole tournament. First of all, I want Shark King of the Dot for having us, and also rest in peace, Exhale. I want to take the moment at the end of this to say that, man. For me personally, I don't know what you used for on Twitch, but that was the best battle of the entire tournament, and I'm so happy that I ended up in the final. Make some noise, Manchester. Show them some love. The judges did come back, and the fan poll, they all went the same way. And the Anarchy champion from Preston shows some love for Pistol Pun. Let's go! Um, and I've followed through with it and done it, so I'm, I'm over the moon with that. If I remember rightly, the brackets would have had me facing the winner of LS Dean and Hulk anyway, if I'd have faced Terminal. Um, and that LS Dean rematch has been on my conscience for a number of a number of years now. Um, as I've said time and time again in face-offs and in interviews and stuff. So I was, I was, it, it didn't really matter who you draw me against because I'd take it as equally as serious as the, as the next one, which I think I've shown in every battle in the tournament. So um, it didn't, it didn't matter to me. I wanted to, I wanted to smoke anyone else in front of me. I hope that you're listening hard. While you're cooked in a way they've never seen before, I'm talking four Michelin stars. I don't rate the way you perform this as an art, talk different and you're missing a heart. It's so clear to see you're just an actor here from all the times that you're switching your parts. I mean, you first arrived and it was mainly you sarcastically spitting when rapping your lyrics. Time passed and you would progress to that drug obsessed Lancashire lad as a gimmick. Soon came the gun bars from all the gats he was clapping and gripping to talking to self harm, whether or not he actually did it against Lazy, a womanizer. All those rhymes about shagging his missus and then burst Canal, more gay bars than Canal Street when he announced his sexuality is different. I wouldn't be surprised if his Twitter was soon closed or he at least had it restricted because surely it's only a matter of time till you eventually reach your character's limit. Every rogue you take for retention ends in a blundering fail. Even the outfits you disguise in hide the fact inside you're so subtle and frail. I see straight through the way you peacock at events desperate for your life to have such a colourful tail. He needed to be high when this man performed so he wouldn't become another afterthought. I mean it even changed your accent help turn you to a massive draw bro you let coke change your true colors more than it has with santa claus and since your life became no drugs allowed you rap in such a slumber now went from switching lines more than the underground to sober as a judging crown you just aren't the same now you dumb it down that's why for this i always wondered how you'd really take me to a house of pain when this ain't the version that would jump around i mean to, to be fair cove is probably the best thing that happened to me in the sense of my battle career because um it's given me the opportunity to take the element of the fans out of it and not rely so much on winning over the room as I used to do in previous battles uh, and I used to focus and now focus more on my material and making sure that um, it's very fluent and I know where each punch comes and I know what comes directly after it that's what I've been focusing on the most during this kind of like era if you will so um, yeah man it's, it's developed me it's, 
I've probably made three or four years worth of development in, in less than a year because of because of the scenario we've been in. So I'm grateful for it, man. I'm like, I'm, I really am. I, did, I knew I was I knew I was going to go far in the tournament regardless because I was confident that it, it, no one no one wanted it as much as me. And I said I've said that every single round, no one wants it as much as me. No no opponent that I've had in that tournament wanted to win that tournament as much as I did. And you could tell with the LSD performance, you could tell with the amount I want, you could tell with the acre one. And then it came down to the final and, and me and Bobby both wanted it. But I, again I feel I felt like I wanted to win it more and I, I showed it on the day. And it doesn't stop there for me. Like the winning the tournament was just like me laying foundations for what's to come. So that's, that was my that was always my my goal um, when I was told that I was getting into the tournament is that winning it is, is what I needed to do. Uh, I was I was very wary of Aker because I know he's a very he's a, he's a clever writer and again he's from this new crop and he was very well thought of um, and the, the I mean the main motivation was for me to get past that because in previous in previous like tournaments that I've been in I've never got past the semi final. So I've been in the top eight tournament, been in academy, I've got to the semi-finals of both of those. So it was a massive thing for me to, to overcome Acre. And if it, even if it was Acre, if it was yourself, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have made much difference to me. I would, have still, I would have still taken it as seriously as I did on the day. And, and again, I feel like I was levels ahead of, of Acre on the day in terms of who wanted to win the, the battle the more. You man are so transparent, it's a shame. See, this is a new era, yet every battle is the same. From your patterns to your actions, how you're acting on the stage, it's crazy. How close you really are to all matching is insane. And all you see them do is add a dash a little change and then attach a different name like all these caterpillar cakes. You only do this for an ego, because they say you're sick, but remain anonymous so you can lower the state of risk. Me? Busy's focused, the name's legit. British Open, I'm swinging, looking for that major win. We're two different kind of people. It's crazy how the way this flips, because while you're up here looking like police in planes or a blatant snitch, I just ain't the guy to try and make a statement with. How you don't connect with us in any way of life is just a no-no. Even when the guy is doing promo, logs into a face off and then hides behind a photo. You book your own accommodation too. Fam, you're unusual, it's blatant. Fuck a hotel. I hope today you've made your own funeral arrangements. He mentions his female siblings in his bars, thinking that'll help him shift ahead to glory. It's gonna take more than some ugly sisters to turn this to a Cinderella story. You see how he tries to be funny and it falls flat with no man to banter, bringing comedy to an empty room and an act surprised when it cans a laughter. That's cause fans aren't tuning in tonight to see mum jokes bury me. That shit's been outdated since Pedro and his Umbro legacy. You really need to switch it up for you to be a full blown enemy. We're gonna need to come across an acre we've never seen before, but that's unknown territory. Cause you average a thousand views a battle. Of all the talent, this is the right man. How are your views so low, Acre, and you come from the high lands? It's crazy, ain't it? How oh, this faker made it to the later stages and got a couple wins against some names that have been inside this game for ages. It stopped here. I've really been planning permission, so I can't let you build on that. I'm leaving Acre wasted. This whole segment of your life is just a phase. Sin Cara versus Sin Cara. I'm in this ring fighting for a name. See, man like you just do this to try and find a good escape from your spineless, mediocre life that doesn't change. So keep trying to make a splash. I'm Poseidon with the waves, he thinks he's dropping jewels on us, but the shine is fucking fake, while Bond's renowned for putting diamonds in your face like in die another day, you're done. Uh, no, obviously you've got to be wary of Bobby man, like Bobby come with possibly the best performance of the year from a UK battler against Georgie Root, so there was no way I was taking that lightly, um, and I just wanted to, I wanted to showcase what I can do, and I, and I know Bobby was a big opponent, he was the biggest one that, I, that I'll have in the tournament. Um, it, the most people will be interested in watching him. Um, so yeah, I, I put it all on the line on that night and I executed it as well as I envisioned it as well. So yeah, I was buzzing when it, when it came down to the came down to the final. However, I did think it was a lot closer on the night based on, again, gauging the room, but it just shows man, like if you actually watch the content and listen to it, it it's a completely different, com it's a different, it's a different kind of like dimension as to, being there in a the room on a day. I was in shock, man. I was in double shock when that fucking confetti cannon went off, but I was there. Uh, yeah, I was I was buzzing. It was a relief, man. Like, literally, I was battling every eight weeks for a year. Like, I battled some Hypes at Apex, and then literally every eight weeks after that, I was battling uh, throughout the whole year. And it was just like a relief of all the hard work paying off and 
like all those hours spent memorizing and writing and stuff it was just like i finally like set my set my stage for myself now so then it was just a case now it's just a case of building on that it was it was great because like i've come into this game watching these kind of people and to actually get plaudits from them after feeling like at the start of the tournament i, I couldn't have been further away from getting those comments and people following me on Instagram and Twitter and, and messaging me and stuff. So to kind of accelerate myself into that, that kind of bracket now is, is, is mad. And now it's just, it's, it's, like I said, it's kicking me on to want more and, and do more and be better, improve, uh, win more, go for bigger bigger names, bigger plays, travel the world, that kind of thing now. And I, now I firmly believe I'm in that, in that bracket to do it. Talking with you guys, we were kind of like deciding the next steps when you wanted me to take the, when you thought I should take the title shot when I wanted to. Because at first I was like, I might have a little bit of a break before I'm just to like recharge because doing so many big battles in one after the other, it was kind of like, I might not get my best material here um, or I might struggle to memorize again, etc. Because it was only a quick little turnaround, I think it was eight weeks or seven weeks between that and Apex. So. But I didn't want to miss out on battling on a big stage, on a main stage event, so um, so I decided to, to go ahead with it and then it fell through a couple of weeks before, which I was devastated about. Um, but you've got to give you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt the first time that they let that the first time that they pull out of a battle, if they've got stuff going on or whatever the excuse is or whatever the reason is why they can't do it, I'm always I'm always gonna be a human first and a battle rapper second, so I was happy to rearrange it, but I was I was gutted that I was missing Apex because it was such a high quality event and you can see from the footage and the reaction of the crowd and the hype building about the scene that um, I should have been there. That was that was that was gutting for me. This was always a goal. This was always me being a champ was always a goal for me. I always wanted to be UK champ of battle rap. Um, and then you can you can argue that I, I haven't earned it or uh, because the battle's not going down or I should wait to battle him when he's ready. There's a lot of like variables, but at the end of the day, like I can't, I can't change the actions of other people. I can only do what's ready. I was fully ready to beat you, you know? I was fully ready to smoke him at Apex. I was ready, I could do the battle in the next 10 minutes if you wanted me to. So it was, it, it was never a problem on my side. I was always ready. I, like I said earlier in the interview, I, I had my best material ready better than Bobby Rex. Performance was going to be crazy because I was going to be in front of a crowd. I was going to feed off the energy of the crowd. I don't. I genuinely don't think he could have done anything to, to beat me on the day. And that's not me saying it now because he's cancelled. I've been that confident all the way through. If you can, you, like everyone that I've spoken to close around me, I've always been that confident that I'd, that I'd win this title anyway. So yeah, like I said, it's a very bittersweet moment in the fact that I've not won it by beating him, but at the end of the day, my accolades over the course of the last 12 months speak for themselves and, and I feel like I've deserved it based on that anyway, because I don't think anyone in UK battle rap is racking up wins of the calibre that I've been racking them up over the course of the last 12 months. So if there's anyone that's going to be UK champ for, for Premier Battles, it should be me anyway. That's how I, that's how I see it now anyway. And lastly, 2021, uh, forget like the, the fans and the battlers, for Biz or Bond, how would you sum up your own personal journey this year? Crazy man, crazy, but very rewarding, uh, and it's opened so many doors for me. It's put more eyes on me. Um, I'm going to Canada next year, which I can't, still can't get my head around. Um, and yeah, I'm ready to take on anyone next next year. And I'm not just saying that like every other champ before me, but I'm ready to to take on anyone of the best, the best of the best. So anyone wants to battle. And if we revisit this next year, if you could have your eyes on one person to defend your title against first, anyone you mind? Dream matchup, Tony D. Based on current work rate and relevance in the scene, Cole J. So, you've heard it here first. At Bizzobond on Twitter, at Bizzobond on Instagram. Check out my YouTube channel, Spotify, all that good shit.